The design of a basic gamma camera allows it to take a picture of a gamma ray source, such as activity within a patient, by detecting gamma rays like this one that pass through a hole in the collimator to reach the sodium iodide scintillation crystal. Each gamma ray interacts to give a flash of several thousand visible light photons, which are reflected and channeled out through the light guide to reach the photomultipliers. The signal from each photomultiplier is amplified and passed to the pulse arithmetic circuit, which calculates the energy of the gamma ray from the total amount of light received, and also x and y coordinates representing the position in the crystal where the gamma ray interacted. The amount of light collected by each photomultiplier depends how close it is to the scintillation point. So the photomultiplier that is closest produces the biggest amount of light, and hence we can use that as a rough idea of where the gamma ray interacted. But we can do better than that if we look at the signals on either side. In this case, the gamma ray interacted slightly to the left of centre, so this photomultiplier produces a slightly bigger signal than the one on the other side. And in fact, we can use the centre of gravity of this signal distribution as our best estimate of the position where the gamma ray interacted. If the size of the output signal from each photomultiplier tube is represented by the height of each of these blocks on this cardboard cutout, then the balance point, or the centre of gravity, is our best estimate of the correct location where the gamma ray occurred. So we need to find the centre of gravity, or the centroid of this distribution. I'm going to use this Perspex model to demonstrate how a gamma camera works out the position of an event using pulse arithmetic circuitry. This part of the model represents the crystal of the gamma camera and each of these slots represents one of the photomultiplier tubes. I'm going to use some lead shot to represent the light photons that are produced when a gamma ray interacts with the crystal. I've got a scale that goes from 5 on the left to 5 on the right with 0 in the middle and I'm going to choose a position of 3 on the right as the position where my gamma ray will interact with the crystal. So I have my lead shot representing the light photons spreading out and being collected by all the photomultiplier tubes. And you can see that we get a distribution with most light collected by the tube that's opposite where the gamma ray interacted and less on either side. So we need to find the centre of gravity of this distribution. To find the centre of gravity, I'm going to take all the lead shot and transfer them into this balance device. Now all we need to do is to find the point at which we can balance this by putting a lead weight on. And now it's balanced nicely there. The centre of gravity will be the point at which all the weight could act and still give the same balance point. So if I transfer all the lead shot out of all of the tubes into this plastic bag, this re represents the sum of all the photomultiplier outputs, or the total amount of light collected. And if we hang that on the balance, we can find the point where that acts to give the balance point. There, it seems to be balancing nicely at just three and a half on the right. So we actually put the gamma ray in at three on the right, and our balance point has turned out to be three and a half rather than exactly three. Maybe that's disappointing. But let's see what happens if we try the same thing again. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again, simulating a gamma ray coming in and interacting at a position 3 on the right. And here the lead shot representing all the light photons being collected by the photomultiplier tubes. So we need to work out the centre of gravity of this distribution. So let's find the centre of gravity of this distribution. There's all the light in each of the photomultiplier tubes. Let's find the balance point. It balances just there. So if we collect all the lead shot representing the light from each of the photomultiplier tubes, 
this will be the total amount of energy deposited in the crystal, proportional to the total light collected, and hence the sum of all the photomultiplier outputs. Let's see where that balance is this time. This time it balances at two and a half. I'm going to repeat another run with the gamma ray interacting at exactly the same point, three on the right, and here the lead shot representing the light being collected by all the photomultipliers. We've got another distribution, very similar to what we had before. And if we repeat the same thing to find the balance point of this distribution, this time we balance it again with the lead weight, find that it's just balanced there. This time we find it balances at exactly three. So you see that each time we perform this measurement we get a slightly different answer. On average it was three, which is correct, but it varied above and below that from about two and a half to three and a half. And that's due to the random fluctuations in the number of lead shot collected in each of the slots, representing the random fluctuations in the amount of light collected by each photomultiplier tube. And indeed, in the real gamma camera, there are also variations in the number of photoelectrons produced at the photocathode of each photomultiplier. That all adds up to an uncertainty in the position due to what we call the intrinsic resolution of the gamma camera. And in a real gamma camera, that leads to a limit of about three and a half millimetres, the best we can do to determine the position of the gamma ray. In the same way, the total number of lead shot collected here, representing the total amount of light collected by the photomultipliers, also varies, and that leads to a variation in the energy signal and an energy resolution of about 9%. Once again, due to random fluctuations in the amount of light collected and the number of photoelectrons produced at the photocathode of each photomultiplier. That's a fundamental limitation of the sodium iodide crystal and these photomultipliers. But that's how anger pulse arithmetic works and it illustrates the limitations of the resolution of that method.